this is Maggot Chasing Retro. Today I wanted to give you a sneak peek of how the eclectic journals are going that I'm working on. Very slowly, but I am working on them. Um, it's been kind of a crazy week and a half, but um, I am making slow but surely progress on each one. This is the stack of papers so far. Um, I have one in front of each journal and I'll show you in a second. Um, I like to set these out on the dining room table as I select and sort my pages and then bring them over one at a time to my desk to trim down and fold and all of that. But the first one is made of a children's reader called I Have Friends. Uh, I think, let's see, four out of five of these are textbooks, um, vintage readers or textbooks. The last one is just a... A young adult novel so they are not going to be color coordinated all the way through but the base sheets the main card stocks that I use as like the first page of each each signature I am trying to sort of color coordinate with the color of the covers here's the second one this is another reader and it's called kittens and children which is super random but I love it for that reason <laughs> I've been really wanting to make these because these are books that I'm like, I have no idea what else I'm gonna do with these but make eclectic journals. So, and this one has some really fun colors in here. Some lime greens and blues and hot pinks. This one is a college textbook for statistics and I love the colors in this one. My three, one of my three favorite combos, red, yellow, and green with a little bit of brown thrown in. So, and I, I use this vintage calico, which is so fun too. This is another reader. Um, I'll show you the inside, of course, when I do the, another video, but um, each one of them has a fabric spot, rebuilt spine that's one and a half inches. This one has a lot of blues and corals, um, oranges, things like that. And the last one is this super random book <laughs> that I found at a thrift store and knew that it was perfect for a eclectic journal. And so this one's going to have a lot of aquas and greens and blues and browns and grays. Um, so those are the five that I'm working on. And now I'm going to bring you over to my desk and we will pick out a few pages to go in them together. Okay, I hope the lighting is okay. <clears throat> it's very, very dark and stormy here today, so I have all the lights on in the room that I can possibly turn on. This is a box that I got as a gift from my mom and dad, and it is just a extremely... I've never seen a gift box this nice. I mean, you can see how thick it is. I love it. So I was like, oh, this would be perfect for my spare book pages, because I was just sort of keeping them in a basket. No, not a basket. It was a shoe box and it was just literally falling apart from the weight. So I was excited to get, get this. And I have just a supreme random assortment of pages in here. There's no certain theme or anything like that. It's just, if I have book pages that I don't have a folder for a theme for them to go into, I put them in here. And as you can see, it's getting close to the top, which shows me it's time to make some eclectic journals. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. This is, a lot of this is recent Happy Mail. This is an embroidery pattern, which is super fun and unique. So I will pick one of these out to put in, let's do the one on the top. I'll pick one of these out to cut up and make into five pages for the five journals. I hope you guys are doing okay. I cannot believe January is almost over. Um, so I have a little bit of an update for y'all on the missing packages. Uh, it's still not completely resolved. I put in a missing package request for both of them. Uh, three days later, it became open for me to put in a insurance claim. And I did that on Monday morning. I realized after I did it that I forgot to upload uh, one of the pictures, but I don't think that really matters because 
um, yesterday afternoon, out of nowhere, I got a text from the USPS because I have text, I have the tracking number sending me text updates, and it said that both of the packages had arrived in Texas. I almost fell in the floor, y'all. It's been almost a month. <laughs> I had already sort of um, made it right for the most part with the buyers. We had agreed on some terms of what we were going to do if the insurance claim did not work out. And in the back of my mind, I was secretly hoping and praying that they would still get to the people, even though, even if we got everything worked out. And it looks like maybe that's going to happen. Um, it has not moved since yesterday. It arrived at a distribution center in Texas yesterday at 1 p.m. my time. So noon their time. And I haven't received any more updates since then. But I am optimistic that they will eventually get there. I really hope so. I really, really hope so. So as of right now, I will be continuing to ship USPS. Um, it's just easier. And when it's working as it should, it's very reliable. It's seamlessly integrated into Etsy. And people just tend to prefer it. And um, is mainly in regards to how the packages are delivered if the person's not home or they can't get up the driveway. USPS seems to be the one that's the most willing to work with the customer to make sure your package doesn't get uh, damaged or delivered to the wrong place or things like that because of weather or big dogs or all of that. So I will continue to do it um, very cautiously, but optimistically. So I'll just say that. So if you have ordered something from me, just know that it will probably be coming USPS for the foreseeable future. But also know if you see that it has stalled or something weird happens on Etsy, know that I am, am on the other side of that tracking it very closely and I am very aware and I will, I will just not ship something out and not check to see if it got to you. I, will, I check every day. So be aware of that and have confidence in that when you purchase from my shop. And thank you to those who continue to purchase even though all of this has been happening. Um, the birds are really loud today. I guess because it's warmer than usual, they're kind of coming out of their little spots where they had. Um, and another update is, um, well, not really update about the shop or anything, but I had sort of a curveball thrown to me this week. I went to the dentist on Monday for a cleaning. Um, and I came to my dentist after leaving a, a dentist that had given me a long record of very, uh, some dental procedures that were not done like they should have been. I won't go into detail, but um, I wouldn't say negligence or ineptness. I would like to assume the best, but obviously things were not right. So I changed dentist and it, my dentist, it took years to finally resolve all of the things that had gone wrong and I thought I was good and I have been for about three years but I had some bad news broken to me on Monday that I had a failed root canal. So they had an appointment come open yesterday while I, Wednesday while I was standing at the counter and I took it because though I hate going to the dentist the hate the thing I hate worst is dreading going to the dentist. So I took it I was in yesterday morning, I was home by lunch, and all in all, I can say that it was not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I'm glad it's over. I'm very, very thankful for a good dentist. Very thankful. I know some people don't like their dentist. I know some people don't have dental insurance. Ours is not great, but it is something. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really hope this is the last of trying to figure out how to get my mouth like it should be after a couple of years of some not so great things. Um, I really like using these black pages in journals. I don't know if 
if other people like to write on them as much as I do, but you can use gel pens, you can use glitter pens, you can use, you can even gesso it if you want to use a regular pen. Um, but I just, I love them. I think they're interesting and for eclectic journals, they're perfect. So I'm going to pull five out. Y'all, this is from a notebook that I had that I took notes in at church in college. Isn't that funny? Like, we hold on to things and think, I'm never going to use the rest of this notebook. And then, lo and behold, we find out about this hobby called junk journaling. And suddenly, we look at everything in our entire house very differently, <laughs> including notebooks from a long, long, long time ago. I don't know if y'all remember or not, but the late 90s, early 2000s, black notebooks and gel pens were like the the craze. I saw them in every little gift shop I went to and I caved and bought some. And obviously I'm getting my money's worth out of it. <laughs> I really like these pages. The, these are from a blank book from Chronicle Books. Um, I used to be a review blogger and I got a bunch of free products sent to me including a lot of blank notebooks. And the ones with plain pages I usually donated but when I saw this one I wish I could find another one like this. Oh man, the cover was so gorgeous too that I ended up ripping the cover off and cutting it down to make bookmarks. That's how that's how beautiful it was. This is before I started junk journaling too. But all the pages that I did not write on, I saved. And I really do think I want to put these in the journals too. It's a mixture of dot paper and graph and plain and these, you know, like the handwriting lines. I just, I need to go see if I can find some more Chronicle books, um, notebooks like this on eBay or something. I really don't want to pay full price for one for junk journal purposes, but sometimes you can find stuff like this on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Alrighty. These are cute. These are little... I almost said Peter Pan. Where did that come from? Um, Beatrice Potter book pages, and they're already, I mean, I, I removed them from the book by the thread, so they're, they're already folded. But I don't know that I want to put these in the eclectic journals because they're, they're more of a childhood theme or a baby theme. But I do love them, and I have a lot left. So I will not do that one. No, I do love using these in... Um, eclectic journals. This is a book that I gave our daughter a few Christmases ago and then after it sat there and sat there she admitted to me, I really don't think I'm ever going to use this. Would you like to have this for junk journals? And it's just basically a color finders book. So you would go out in nature and you would find something that was this color and write down what you found that was that color. If it's a leaf you could even tape it here or here. And then you write down um, what what you name the color, and then other times you found the same color. I think this is a little bit odd. I don't know who has this kind of time in their life to do this, but um, it does make a fun journaling page, doesn't it? Obviously, this doesn't match this, because when I took the book apart, the light blue swatch was right here, and it got taken out. So uh, if, that, if it bothers you that these aren't gonna be, like you're not gonna be able to flip and find the match to this, well, I can't, I can't tell you what, what to do because <laughs> it's just the way the book came apart. But let's do five of those too. This gray and green one would be cool in the um, Weightless Mother book. <laughs> Y'all, I tried to read that book just to see what the premise was. It was so random and just bizarre that I was not enjoying it, so I did not read very far. I can't imagine why a library, a school library, would discard a book like that. It's just <laughs> beyond my comprehension. Let's see here. This is brown. I don't really want any brown. How about orange and purple? Yeah, this is nice. So that's what my week has been, y'all. Um, I've been able to handle the pain with regular pain relievers. There's this new product out called Advil Dual Action. 
which is basically the benefits of alternating Tylenol and ibuprofen, but in one pill. I know it's probably a marketing scheme and I paid more than I should have, but you know what? It's less pills to swallow, so. But um, they always send you home at my dentist with, you know, the strong stuff. And those make me very, very sick, like super sick, like seasick for days. So I said, you can send me home with that, but you also must give me nausea medication. So they did. Um, and I filled both of them, but they are still sitting over there because I haven't needed them so far. Praise the Lord. I have had a lot of dental issues in my life because I have an extremely narrow palate. And so it leads to jaw alignment and biting issues as well as... Um, that's not a good one. That says peace. Um as well as TMJ, which kind of goes with that, as well as um, clenching. Cl I don't really grind, but I do clench my teeth at night. And I'm sure some of you will say, what about mouth guards? I've tried all those. I even bought the one that's that was over $1,000. Yeah, all of the, I did stop clenching my teeth, but my jaw pain quadrupled. So I am not a candidate for those, sadly. It's disheartening. But I feel like we all have a thorn in our flesh and I think for me, it's my mouth. We've got three here, let's do two more. That was my daughter's handwriting. She used this for a while as a journal, but I think she only wrote on two pages, so she gave this one to me as well. I had a lot of hand-me-downs for my kids, I just realized. Of course, I would never tear a book apart that they are, um, they or my husband and I are, um, what do you call it? Our heartstrings are tattooed. There's just some books that we read, we read to them as kids when they were little, little, that I could never, never, never tear up. They will always be in their keepsake box. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, there's our five. Sometimes when I go through this box, I forget what I have. All right, you know what I'm not doing? I'm not doing a good job at keeping two separate stacks. When I do this, I do one stack of writing pages pages that are easily written on, like that. These are writing pages. These are writing pages. These two. Why do they feel like there's not five in here? They're just thin. This is not a writing page. I mean, yes, of course you can write on this, but I'm gonna call this a book page. So I'm gonna put this in a separate um, stack. All right, let's continue on. Isn't that pretty? This is from the cookbook called Deceptively, De <laughs> that's hard to say, Deceptively Delicious. And um, I love these. I use some of this in my cookbook journals. Speaking of cookbook, I think there's a lot of cookbook pages in here, so I'm just gonna get past that. Cross stitch pattern, but we already have an embroidery, so we're gonna not do that. This came with, uh, I think this came with a flower press that I got. It's interesting, but I think I'm not gonna use it for these. But you would press flowers and then you would talk about, you would find out the scientific name and where you harvested it and all that. Sewing pages are always fun, but this might be the paper that cracks when you fold it, let's see. No, it's okay. Let's put this in the book book page stack. I'm gonna do five random book pages. I want each journal to have its own. I don't want all of the journals to have the same exact pages because I want them to each have their own personality. This is an interesting page, I think. Let's do that. I need to put this in my, I just started a circus uh, folder for the far, far future, make a circus journal, or if I end up not wanting to, 
uh, making a ephemera pack to sell. But I probably will because I really want to make a circus journal out of a Dumbo book. This one is so cute and I've been holding on to it for an eclectic journal and I think this is it. We'll do that. That's three. These are very brittle, so I can't use these. This is from a book that I used for the rain journals. It's really cute. But again, I feel like it's more childhood themed, so I'll probably hold those for a little golden book journal of some sort. I've got some devotional pages and these interesting little pages. These are fun. You could do five of these. These are Happy Mail. I don't know who. It's been a long time. Oops. This glue is keeping them from tearing well. We may just have to go with it. I saw that, that um, I get an email from an estate sale locator service. I saw that there are four estate sales this weekend. Maybe I will feel like venturing out and doing that. I am on an antibiotic too. He always puts a, his patients on that when they have any kind of procedure. And I don't like it being on antibiotics at all. Um, they make me feel gross, of course. And also, I'm always worried they're going to. So, I'm very big on gut health, and I eat a lot of fermented foods, and I drink kombucha, and um, I'm putting a, more pages in my circus stack. I eat a lot of kombucha and sauerkraut and fermented pickles and stuff like that. I really want to get back into making sourdough bread. I used to make that a lot when the kids were little. Um, but I, oh, and kefir or kefir or whatever it is. And so I eat that kind of stuff daily. But when I go on antibiotic, it probably does more than I feel like it's doing, um, but it still makes me feel run down. And then it takes me about a month, well, more than that, probably two months to feel like my stomach is back to normal. So that's fun. I think I'm telling y'all way too much information today. I'm sorry if I'm grossing anybody out. I don't mean to. The past few years I've been sick or something has happened to me in January. So I was kind of waiting on something to happen <laughs> and it did. Um, that's okay. February is gonna be better. This is another circus one I think. It's like the kids made their own show in their garage. So we'll put that over here. Another circus one. I think circus themes were very popular with children's readers back in the 50s. I guess maybe circuses were big. I don't know. All right, this is a really, really old Donald Duck book, and I love it. But it's so, it's so cute, but it's so fall themed. Um, I think I'm just going to not use it for this. I love to put these in a fall journal because it's kind of like a, whoa, there's Donald Duck in here. Donald Duck seems to have that effect on people. You're not expecting to see him in a fall journal, but he's my favorite Disney cartoon character. I like him because he has a temper. Isn't that funny? I think he's so cute when he gets mad. I've got three pages over here. I need two more, and I don't know if I want to use another science page. This one's fun, but it's got something on the back, so 
I thought for this one, this would make a fun full page pocket eventually in something. This is some Happy Mail that I got. One of these would be cool. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be a cool one for maybe the kitten one because the kitten journal has a lot of orange or the, um, the one with the little magic carpet on the front. I love, this is probably my last page. Is it my last page? From the uh, Gwen Frostick book that I just happened to find at a used book sale for a dollar. I know her books go for quite a lot. The reason why it was marked down, it was very mildewed in the inside front cover, but I took that off and took the page, salvaged the pages out of it. Isn't that fun though? That looks like a Kingfisher. Here's another thing for the circus is the cover for that reader. Oh, here's another Gwen Frostick. Look at that. Perfect journaling page. So much white. And here is a vintage Sears ad. And here is, that'd be better for childhood. We have some German paper. Wait, that's not German. I think it's Dutch. I think I've already asked the person, the last time I went through this box, who gave it to me and they said, oh, that's Dutch. <laughs> I love these. It's gonna be really, I'm gonna have a hard time using these because I just love how they're blue printed and they're, they're tall and narrow. As you can see, I have a ton of reader pages. Let's see. I have an international page. I could do that. Is it already stuck together? There we go. Let's do that. Now we have our five. I would like to put a yearbook page in each one. And I've got a few here that I got in Happy Mail. Let's see if I have five. I have four. So I'm gonna need to get one more out of mine. And it's a good bit bigger. Is one of my yearbooks. I have five, but they're all from the same university. Probably should have shared them out, but they would just cost so much money to mail. It would have to be a happy mail with one item only. <laughs> um, this is the fraternities. Here it is. Here's just the regular class. Let's do that. I'm gonna have to trim that one down or make that into a pocket page. But I'm not gonna let y'all, I'm not gonna make y'all, um, let y'all, you can if you wanted to. I'm not gonna make y'all sit and listen to me the whole time I do this, cause I'll be here over an hour. But I just wanted to um, tell y'all I'm still here, I'm still here. I just had a little bit of a curveball this week. Um, my new job has been good, but busy. Slowly but surely gaining momentum there and gaining more responsibilities. Um, of course, I didn't work much yesterday. I did what I could, but I realized I was not being an asset to them at all by <laughs> trying to work as soon as I got home yesterday, so I logged in a little bit last night and did some stuff, but thank goodness for remote working. I tell you what, I, it's amazing to me. Are these not the cutest things you've ever seen? I framed one of these and put it in my room. Yes, I did, because they're just so cute. The colors are beautiful. This is a fun page. Okay, here are some pages that 
I got in Happy Mail that are very, this is not the type of journal to put these in. These, these deserve something very important and special, like maybe like um, any of the little women journals that I did. If I'd had these back then, I would have used them for sure. That's probably the oldest thing that I have in my collection right there. That's why they're on the bottom so they can be protected. Why did I keep this? I thought I got rid of the rest of this book. I was gonna try to source all the images out of the, those types of book, um, book blocks and then just throw the rest away because I was getting swamped by just stuff like that, like half used books that were just taking up space on my shelf. And you can only save so many plain text pages to make stuff with. After a while, it starts getting ridiculous and you have to throw some away. Unless the paper is just the perfect buttery soft and you, and you don't want to throw it away. But, um, oh, these came in Happy Mail. They are tea dyed maps, which is neat. Um, Ooh, I should do some of these. These are cute. And they're already joined together. I might need to bolster it a little bit, but that's cute. Um, let me know what y'all are working on right now. I know I've been watching some people. Um, I watched a good bit yesterday laying down and resting. I watched uh, Jonna is working on cookbook journals. And, um, let me see, who else did I watch yesterday? Angela, the traveling crafter, has been making the cutest little eclectic journals made out of vintage childhood books. And she also made this amazing sewing journal. Y'all need to go look at her stuff. And, um, Carrie at the Paper Monkey has been making nurse nancy journals i don't know if they're for herself or for friends oh that's fun not tying um but they're cute i love that book um carol at crinkle path is about to reach her i think today is her birthday or tomorrow or i'm close to it close to it and sierra also happy birthday to you two birthdays this week in the community sierra at cooley craft corner um So yeah, a lot of people are working on birthday giveaways and stuff like that. I feel like birthdays come in in, ru in a rush. You know, you'll have like several at once and you won't hear about, about one for a couple of months. But I think I did a giveaway for my birthday last year. I could be wrong. I could have done it. Maybe my birthday corresponded with like a YouTube mile marker and that's what I'm thinking. But I need to kind of put my head to what am I going to do for my next milestone on YouTube. I'm not sure. Not sure. I also know, based on what people have been watching and commenting on, that people seem to really like short, succinct tutorials slash... I don't like to call them tutorials. <laughs> I like to call them, this is how I do something. Because tutorial just sounds so formal and like extremely well planned and thought out. Most of my stuff is not that. It's just what's easy for me to do. And I'm sharing it with you. But I don't want to label it a formal tutorial. But so far people have said very nice things about the ones that I've put out that are 15 minutes or less. So I'm thinking about these aren't supposed to be in here. Let me take these out. See? This is why going through these helps because you find things that are filed wrong. So I'll probably be doing some more of those. Um, whenever I stop to make something for a journal, I need to say, wait, Meg, why don't you put the camera on and show how you make this thing? Well, sometimes it's just hard to remember when you're in the moment and you're trying to get something made, but I'll try to be better about that. So these are the kind of things I like to use for the TV cards, which is a, a good example of what I'm talking about. People seem to really like the very, very, very simple TV card idea that I had. 
and they've been making them and telling me how much fun they've been to make and that just brings me so much joy so I need to look back at my <laughs> past things that I've made in my journals and say oh I, maybe I should show how I make this or this or this um, I guess what I'm saying is I don't really have a really good plan about what I need to be making content wise on YouTube right now I'm just kind of doing good about or not doing good about it I'm really doing poorly at this just showing you what I'm doing to catch you up and show you hey this is what I'm working on but I would like to have a little bit more structure eventually to my YouTube channel and I know that will come in time as I get more used to working and making my schedule break up during the day from work to not working it's just kind of a hard transition for me and making sure everything still gets done so be patient with me on that y'all but um, if there's anything I'll say this if there's anything right now off the top of your head that you would love 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 to see me show that could be done in about 15 minutes or less please let me know and I'll start a list is that not the cutest I feel like I need to save this somehow. So I think I'm gonna stop for now because I'm about to reach the end of this box, which means, sorry, that was loud, which means I'm gonna have to start opening my books over there and finding some interesting pages in my actual books that I source from. And that involves making a big mess in my house, so. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well, staying dry if you're getting as much rain as we are, and let me know what you're working on, and also let me know what you would like to see on this channel as a little show me, show and tell for ephemera and other tasks like that for journals. And guys, until next time, I really hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.